And if you digest all this, what does it mean? That's the most important thing. What has the finance minister told the people of Ghana? Mr. Speaker, I submit simple. If you evaluate what the finance minister is doing, and evaluate what number one of men's gold did, <laughs> the two are synonymous and the same. The fact is that there is no difference. Number two, Mr. Speaker, if number one had gotten this condition, his financial instrument or financial campaign would have existed as we speak today. There's a principle in economics known as the transversality condition. Yes. The transversality condition states that so far as government survives, government will never default. That is why when you are accounting for the capital asset pricing model, there's a risk free rate. The risk free rate is the rate that government gives. If you want more, that is if you want to take risk, then you go for a premium. For the first time in the history of this country, it never happened. For the first time, government is saying that it is so broke, the economy has been so mismanaged that they can't even honor the coupon payment or money that government took from not just ordinary individuals, but from our old mothers and fathers whose survival, whose livelihood depends on the little coupons that they get. This is a serious matter. This is not an NDC matter. This is not an MPP matter. This is a national issue where all of us ought to put our political difference aside, look straight into the Minister of Finance and tell him the Minister, you will not touch the pensioners today, you will not touch them tomorrow. Yeah. That for the first time we are putting our political difference aside, we should pass a resolution telling the Minister, I'm not interested in his resignation. If you don't want to resign, that is your own cup of tea. Because the problem is not just Kenu Foriata. The problem is Kenu Foriata, Dr. Baumia, and Akufado. This trilogy, this trade, this trade, they are the problem of Ghana. I mean, that's because problems cannot solve problems. Solutions solve problems. I'm therefore calling on Parliament to pass a resolution compelling the Minister of Finance, just as he has done in paragraph 27 page 7, that all the pensioners would be exempted from this domestic debt exchange. Yeah. But Mr. Speaker, are we still a proud nation? <laughs> are we suddenly no more a proud nation that we are all over the place begging people who borrowed money from and telling them we can't pay them and there are no consequences for this? Mr. Speaker, next time somebody serves in public office and tells you, I don't want to be paid, you should be very careful. You should be extremely careful because fee things are expensive. And it is an example of what we are experiencing today. How can this group of people that call themselves property-owning Democrats are the ones collecting people's properties? So when they come telling you we are property-owning Democrats, Think twice. They will come after your property. They will come after your savings. People cannot win us, and when you ask them to leave their office, they say they will move. They thought that we are not paying you, you are not ready to resign. And every day you are giving us one funeral after the other. How can we always be crying because you are a finance minister?